In the last few videos, we've been looking at differentiation. We've looked at increasing functions, decreasing functions, and stationary points. We went on to look at the nature of stationary points. We saw that there were three different scenarios. We had a maximum, a minimum, or a point of inflection. We're now going to move things on and look at the concept of optimization. Many situations, for example, in science, finance, sport, or engineering, require a best fit solution given a range of constraints. An example might be to maximize profit or minimize cost. We can use differentiation to model these situations up, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. What I'm going to do is take a piece of card, and the card is going to now be five, let's have it as five by three. So this is gonna be five units long, and then it's going to be three units wide. What I want to do with this piece of card is make a box with the greatest capacity or the greatest volume. And what I'm going to do is cut now squares from the sides of this. So if we cut now a square, and we'll say that the length of that square, the side length of the square is gonna be x, I'm going to cut these squares from each corner, such that I can go ahead and fold this up. So if we can just picture this folding this up, these bits are gone, and all we have left now is this that looks a bit like a Tetris block. So if we think about that now, this is going to be x, we've got x, so we can go ahead and put these on. So these now are just lengths of x. So what I want to do now is find the value of x such that this gives me the maximum possible capacity. So when we think about that word maximum, we can relate that back to differentiation. Let's just think about now this as a box. And what we'll do is just draw a quick sketch. So if I now put the box up, and the quick sketch doesn't have to be brilliant, it'll just give us some idea of what's going on. So the box is going to look something, give or take, like so. And we will just think about this now. So what we've got then is a height of x. So this is going to be a height of x. Now before this length right here, let's just put this here, the length right here was going to be 3. If we think about what's left, we've got this part left, and that part is going to be 3 minus 2x. In the same way, this part right here is going to be 5 minus 2x. So we now have the dimensions of the box. So this is going to be 3 minus 2x, and then we're going to have 5 minus 2x. Clearly, x can only take some values. So what we're looking at is the volume. The volume can't be negative. So if we consider now that x is going to have to be greater than 0, yet in turn, if we consider this one, it's going to have to be, and that's the stricter of the two inequalities, it's going to have to be less than 3 over 2. So what we're looking at then is a value between 0 and 3 over 2, such now that we can find the maximum capacity of the box. The capacity is the volume. The volume is the length multiplied by the width, multiplied now by the height. So I've got x, 3 minus 2x, 5 minus 2x. So we can see that we've got a cubic function. Now, v is a function of x, volume is a function of x here, essentially volume and side length. If we think about a cubic equation now, a positive cubic equation, we're going to end up with now some curve, and let's just do this, that looks a bit like that. What we have here is a maximum, and what we have here now is a minimum. So what we're trying to do is maximize the volume. So this relates back to the idea of differentiation and finding a maximum value for x. Once I've got that maximum value of x, I can plug it back into the volume to find the maximum volume or capacity of the box. So let's go ahead and just write this out. Let's expand now the double brackets. That's 15, and then we're going to have minus 16x plus 4x squared. So v as a function of x gives me 4x cubed minus 16x squared plus 15x. What I'm going to do here is graph this. Now we're interested in x between 0 and 3 over 2, such that it satisfies uh, the constraints that we have. We can't have this length to be negative, and quite clearly this is the stricter of the two inequalities. We've got now 5 over 2, which is 2.5. So it's got to be somewhere between now 0 and 3 over 2. So what I'm going to do is now graph this. So let's go ahead and put this on a set of axes. So I'm just going to go ahead and type this in now. Let's put in the function, and we will have a look at that. Okay. Right, that's now typed in. Let's just click that. 
and this gives us our function. So v is a function of x. Here is the x-axis. Here now is v, the volume axis. We're interested in this now between 0 and 3 over 2. And we can see that that gives us one of our zeros. So if we look at this right here, what this gives us is now the cubic curve. This is the maximum point. If we differentiate and find dv dx, so we're differentiating the volume with respect to the side length, we've got this maximum. So the maximum volume will occur now when we have the x-coordinate just here of 0 0.607. We can see now that we have a minimum just here. We're not interested in that as we're looking for a maximum and quite clearly this is not valid given the value of x. So what we could do is find dv dx, set it to 0, solve for x, find the value of x that makes it a maximum capacity and then go ahead and find that. So that's what we're going to do. So what we want to do is differentiate the volume with respect to the side length. So dv by dx, that's going to give me, multiplying down by the power, dropping the power by 1, 12x squared minus 32x plus 15. So what we can say then for max, and we're looking for a maximum value of x. So we can say now for max, the derivative dv dx will be equal to 0. We now have a quadratic in x that we need to solve. Um, I'm not going to waste my time and try and factor that. I'm simply going to put it through the quadratic equation. So what we're going to have then is minus b, so that's going to be 32, plus now the square root of minus 32 squared, and then we're going to have minus 4 times by 12 times by c, which is going to give me 15, and that's all over 2a, which is going to be 24. So if we look at that, that is our first solution. That was the one that we saw. That gave us a minimum. If I now subtract it, we end up now with this value, 8 minus root 19 over 6, which gives me 0 0.6068. So we can say now at this stage that the value of x, x is equal to, and let's just go there, let's uh, 0 0.6007. Now that is 3SF, so let's write three significant figures. So this is the value of x that makes now the capacity of the box a maximum. We see we had a maximum point, we differentiated, we set to zero, we solve for x. All we need to do now is sub this value back into the volume to find the maximum volume. So what I'm going to do is just take this, so I'm going to hit Shift, Store A, because I might need to come back to that. So here is the volume, four lots of my answer cubed, so let's sub that in. Then we're going to have minus 16 lots of my answer squared, plus now 15 lots of my answer. This will give us now the maximum volume. The maximum volume is going to be 4.10 units. So let's go ahead and write that out. So we can say max volume. So max V, what we're going to have here, V is going to be equal now. And let's go ahead and do that, 4.10. So this is going to be 4.10 units cubed. And that now is to three significant figures. So that's what we end up with. If we wanted to show that this was a maximum, we would take the second derivative right here and show subbing in our value of x gives us a negative. So that's what we looked at. The definition of now a maximum for the second derivative is such that d2v by dx squared would be negative. So let's uh, just prove that this is a maximum. d2v by dx squared is going to be 24x minus 32. We can say now when x is equal to the 0 0.606 dot dot dot, d2v by dx squared is going to be 24 lots of that minus 32. So let's calculate that, 24 lots now. So 24a, then we're going to have minus 32. So what's that going to give me? That's going to give me now minus 17.4, uh, let's write that there, minus 17.4, therefore max as less now as we can say d2v by dx squared is going to be less than zero. So that's just a quick, um, a quick, well, 
little sketch really and a little play about with some numbers such that we can find now the maximum volume of a box given now that the constraints of this is that x is going to be between 0 and 3 over 2 and we have a 5 by 3 box. Um, so a typical optimization problem we're looking now to either minimize something, maximize something given that we have these constraints. In later videos, we will go on to look at some more challenging problems. But essentially all we do is now set up an equation, if we're not already given it, we differentiate it. We set it equal to zero, as that will give us the maximum or minimum point. We find the value of x, or whatever the independent variable is, that makes it a maximum or minimum, and then sub it back into the equation. If we're asked to prove it, we take the second derivative and evaluate the second derivative at now the value, in this case, 0 0.606 and so on and so forth, and that's where x occurs. So brief introduction to optimization before we go ahead and look at some examples.